Welcome to Local 88's Summer Shutdown Update. Due to the popularity of our videos with this, during the SIR period and during the uh, COVID-19 period, we have had lots of compliments, uh, full, me full messages, emails, just compliments on how well the videos informed our membership. So with the Communication Committee and Mike Van Bokel and myself, we thought we would continue these over the years sporadically when certain periods of time come up. Summer shutdown is one of those periods of time that we thought we'd go over some information uh, prior to you going on your summer shutdown. Mike Van Bokel will give uh, an update of what's going on in the implant, and I'll kind of give an update of some of the stuff happening down at the hall and with the executive. The first topic is CERB. We did a lot of uh, videos and a lot of CERB was discussed. This isn't really a CERB video, but I want to kind of go over what happened on the payout for the return to work bonus. There was a lot of confusion on what actually, how we got there. I worked with the National quite a bit on this and we had a smaller group and it come to a discussion that we would pay a return to work bonus. That return to work bonus was paid out and when it was paid out, it was paid out at someone who received $573 EI. Now going forward, the, sur the sub that was paid off of the people who were on CERB is, was, is if they got 573, when in actuality they only received 500. So those people came up $73 short. The National did a heck of a job getting us all our money that we got backdated it. And basically there was $73 per week. Um, anyone who doesn't understand what exactly went on can give me a call and I'll try to go over it with them. But going forward, we are looking to recoup that. And that is either going to be through a grievance or once the government allows a sub to be paid while you're collecting CERB. And if that all fails, we'll look at possibly bargaining as a last resort to get that, the $73 per week. And again, I like to stress, nothing was signed off. It was just agreed that we would get these monies for the interim and hopefully it'd be as close as possible for someone the same as collecting EI. So again, I'd like to thank the National on their behalf for all the work they did and as well as some of the other representatives across the GM chain. Elections. Due to all the retirees, which I'll go on about in a minute, um, we have had a few spots open up on the executive, but due to the COVID-19, due to gatherings, we're looking at possibly doing some elections a little differently than we've had in the past. We haven't had a membership meeting since March, I guess since February. It's very difficult when you can you can have no more a group of five. We're now in stage two, you can have a group of 10. And I'm not sure what's happening with stage three, but right now with a group of 10, I'm gonna have a meeting with the election co-chair people and we're hoping to have the election sometime in August where we'll have two or three polling stations with two or three election committee people in the room, then two or three people coming in to vote while we're practicing social distancing and there'll only be, there won't be any more than 10 people in the room at the time. So hopefully that, that information will come after shutdown on the positions that are open as well as how the elections are gonna work. With the hall, I talked about we're in stage two, we're up to 10 people uh, that can come and meet. And we've had an executive meeting where we had approximately about 10 people. Uh, we can't have a membership meeting. Stage three is in the works. I don't know the details of stage three. I don't know if anybody does, but the amount of people that are eligible to meet in a room, we usually have 40 to 50 people at membership meetings. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And hopefully in the uh, near future that we'll be able to have a membership meeting, again, abiding by all the rules of COVID-19. Retirees, we have had so many people leave over the past few months. The numbers are approximately around 230 to 250. But in July, tomorrow was the last work for a lot of people. There's 67 people retiring July 1st. I would like to say thank you for all your service. And again, hope you have a long and enjoyable retirement. Um, a lot of these people that I'm looking on the list are people that I started with or people I worked with over the years. I just like to wish them all a well, a good retirement. One thing I did discuss at uh, the executive meeting was we're not having the normal retirement functions where someone comes into work, has their cake, goes around, sees people. That's not happening again to COVID-19. I ran it by the executive that we should be looking at if things improve late spring, early summer to maybe have a, a huge retirement picnic. 
I was proposing a Saturday, but that'll be up to the committee um, and the executive to decide what day is best, but to have all the retirees welcome them back, have a barbecue, a picnic, and then that way many of the members who didn't get a chance to see these people, you know, come and say their goodbyes. As well, I am posting all their names on the website. So if you do see a name on there that you're familiar with, you didn't get a chance to say bye, give them a call, give them an email, Facebook, whatever way you communicate with them, and then they really appreciate you just saying goodbye to them for all the years of service that you worked with them. Thank you. Hello, and I'd like to start off with our staffing. Uh, start with, I'd like to welcome back our final group of laid off members. We have 65 members who have been laid off for close to three years, and they are all now returning. They're getting the calls this week, and they will be re returning back to us uh, right after summer shutdown. So that is great. It'll be the first time in a few years we've had nobody permanently laid off. Uh, then production. GM has made the decision to move 8,000 units from Mexico back to Canada. The COVID is quite a mess in Mexico with the situation there, so we are getting 8,000 vehicles. GM tried to get the vehicles, the vehicles built over summer shutdown, and as everyone knows, we did, net, we did not get enough volunteers. So GM has now put on uh, mandatory Saturdays starting after shutdown for the first six Saturdays, both shifts, so everybody who's working. And just a reminder, in case you're not aware, if you are laid off that week, you cannot work the, uh, sun, uh, the Saturday. If you work the Saturday only and try an MSO with somebody, it will screw up your EI claim. And if you even want to bank it, the money will be back from where it was deferred. So you can't bank it either if you were off. So if you are working, you're allowed to bank it. That's our contract. But if you're laid off that week, you cannot come in and work for someone else on the Saturday, which is unfortunate. Um, the company is having a very hard time trying to determine our future sales. I think all auto manufacturers are. The COVID pandemic does not appear to be clearing up as fast as we had hoped. The USA and Mexico actually look like they're going backwards right now as far as their COVID cases are going. Um, no auto manufacturer is really saying what their sales look like or how fast they're going to rebound. We currently have enough work right now for about two and a quarter's uh, shift worth of people. We had 50 people retire June 1st. Approximately 65 to 70 are going to retire July 1st. Almost 50 have signed up for August 1st. And add another group of 20 or 30 for September 1st. And we will likely have well over 200 people retire this summer. We have agreed to rotate layoffs until Labor Day. We have no agreement right now beyond Labor Day. Every meeting I have attended for the last couple months, GM have continuously told us they hope to get back to three shifts soon. But that clock keeps ticking. We believe there are four main scenarios that are going to happen to our plant. The first scenario, GM tells us we're going to three shifts. If that is the case, we are going to need to hire two or 300 people fairly soon and obviously before Labor Day. Number two, we continue with rotating layoffs. That will have to be a decision by the membership. If it looks like it's going to be long term beyond Labor Day, we'll have to have the members input to decide if we're going to rotate or not. Uh, the third option, GM decides to reduce one shift and lay off nobody. Uh, one shift could be reduced, no one gets laid off, and then we run with extra bodies across the membership and just take the, lay off, or take the retirements as they come. Or four, they decide to reduce the shift immediately and we lay off permanently. This causes a large chain reaction throughout our language, as the above scenario may as well, including packages and potential, uh, uh, potential packages to our retirees. That is expensive. I don't know if they'll look at that option, but everything will be on the table. I just want to talk to anybody who's currently on any type of COVID leave. We have close to 70 people right now who have been off over the last month or two on COVID leaves. This could be child care, uh, elderly care, or just general anxiety. This is a reminder that all the COVID leaves that you have signed end at the end of this week. All of you will be officially flipped over to summer shutdown starting on Monday. If you are going to stay off, you've already received an e email, every one of you, and you need to reapply with ER if you intend to stay off on a COVID leave after shutdown. If you do not reapply, you are expected back to work in the plant the first Monday following shutdown. Um, COVID and CAMI. We are getting a lot of people asking us how long we are going to be wearing masks, how long we will have our temperatures taken, just basically how we're onboarding people, including our limited rotation, etc. The COVID virus does not appear to be leaving as quick as we had hoped. Most social activities has been, have been canceled for the summer and some of them have already been canceled for the fall. I had hoped at one time that the mass would be a temporary inconvenience. That doesn't appear, appear to be the case. We are looking at different options, um, such as removing the shift gap, which is removed after summer shutdown. 
We are looking at doing uh, increasing the rotation instead of twice a day up to four times a day, but we are not rushing into anything. It must be cleared by different medical and our health and safety groups. We have had no positive cases. The mass and our different procedures do help. Everyone would rather not have to go through our entry procedures and not have to wear a mask, but unfortunately that's not the world we're living in right now. We will continue to monitor every week and hopefully Canada continues to trend down and more and more of our country starts to get more relaxed and we have more startup rules. But right now we are just going week by week and just seeing how everything's going. Uh, just as a shift reminder, the shift gap is gone after summer shutdown. After summer shutdown, the trades are on our three shifts which are with our normal hours. B shift is on days from seven to three and A shift is on afternoons from three to 11. And just as a final reminder, the implant office and benefits office are open during summer shutdown. If you have any questions or need any benefit uh, questions answered, please call us anytime. On behalf of the implant office, I would like to wish everyone a very good summer shutdown. Stay healthy and stay safe. I'd like to close in. 2020 so far has been by far one of the most interesting years that we've had to endure as a membership. We're wearing masks, we're having our temperature change checked, and we're working socially distancing from each other where we can. A lot of people are getting very frustrated, especially with the heat, but I'd have to commend the membership. I haven't heard any real major complaints. We're really doing a good job, as well as I'd like to commend the Unit 488 Health and Safety Committee, as well as General Motors Health and Safety Committee on the return to work. Um, we, we have done an incredible job so far our plant continues to work, and I like to give credit to them. One thing I like to touch on is General Motors. I don't know they watch these videos, but I'd like to go on a little bit about our membership and what they do in our plant on an everyday basis. There are so many programs and so many different matrices that GM wants us to hit, and I've had a couple meetings with upper management. We hit number one in almost every category. I think it's time that we should reward our membership with some type of news of a new product, new investment. We're getting close to bargaining. The D3 bargaining, which me and Mike will take part of, is this fall. Ours is the following fall. But at some point in time, the year model years are running out. COVID-19 has put a big uh, wrench into all of the programs and models. But I think at some point in time, we have to start to discussing with our plant a new product, and I hopefully that's sooner than later. So on behalf of Local Aid Executive and the implant, I'd like to wish everyone a very safe and enjoyable summer shutdown, and we'll see everyone on July 20th when we return to work. Thank you.